Um, then once we're clear on what life's greatest problems are, and I'm guessing the only you know, way you're going to be able to determine is by looking at the main voids in your own life. What are the main problems that you have in your life? What is the main key to resolving these problems? Is understanding yourself going to enable you to become more effective at resolving life's problems? Is remaining the same? Is agreeing with ideas, disagreeing with ideas, is that going to help you resolve greatest life's problems? Or is there something that you don't yet know that you need to know to become more effective and more efficient in life? These are some big questions, aren't they? But these are the questions that we need to be looking at throughout this course, all right? To give you a deeper understanding of the human experience and what we're actually working towards as modern applied psychologists. Question number four, are you ready for this? All right, this is gonna get your mind warmed up, isn't it? How can we communicate with other people more effectively? Full stop. All right, or is the way in which we're communicating right now, the way in which I'm communicating, is this fine? Is this it? Is this just the right way of communicating? How about how you communicate? Is communication just words? Or is communication more than words? What's the difference between verbal communication and non-verbal communication? And what impact do they make in terms of how other people receive us in life? You know when sometimes some people, we might rub them up the wrong way or some people might respond to us in a way in which we don't want them to respond to us in this way. Well, is it because of them or is it because of us? Who's responsible for how it is that other people respond to us? These are some questions that we need to consider in life. How can we communicate with other people more effectively? Question number five. How does the mind influence our emotional experience. Now there's a couple of different perspectives we might want to consider here. Emotions could be standalone illnesses, there could be um, conditions, we might be broken people, or perhaps our mind and our emotions are in some way connected. Is there a connection between the quality and the maturity of our thinking and our emotional experience, or is there none? And whatever your response is, how do you know that your response is true? How do you know that your response is accurate? Is there anything that you don't yet know that you actually really need to start knowing to become more effective in life? All right, interesting questions, aren't they? You get an opportunity to respond to them all in the, um, in the learning log stroke workbook, if you download that once this video is, is finished. So question number six, what is intelligence? All right, if I was to ask you the question right now, how intelligent are you? What would you say? Would you give reference to your IQ? Would you, you know, recite to me all the information and all the knowledge that you have inside of your head? Or is intelligence different than that? How do you determine who's intelligent and who isn't intelligent? And who isn't intelligent? Because for many years, um, you have had organizations and schools and educational institutions um, tell people how intelligent they are by gauging how much information they are able to regurgitate that has already been imparted onto them. So is intelligence going to be determined solely by how able we are and effective we are at retaining information or is intelligence more than that? 